Hello everyone. Uh, let's today uh, we're starting to talk about some programming or problem solving aspect of the uh, nonlinear programming. Uh, last lecture period we finished uh, up to chapter nine of your textbook, and we pretty much finished the uh, <clears throat> theoretical de uh, development for nonlinear programming. At least have a good overview of it. I decided not to continue with the chapter 10 and then uh, and switch our gears towards how to uh, solve nonlinear programming using a practical tools. And today's uh, lecture is trying to uh, for uh, prepare for this purpose. And here initially what I want to introduce is a so-called non- uh, large library of uh, optimization uh, algorithm available for linear and nonlinear programming. It, it is entirely free. It's called scientific pi. And the short word is scipy and <clears throat> used for optimization. So <clears throat> that's today's introduction. I will try to give some overview <coughs> of the SciPy optimization library and <coughs> and give you some small uh, example to show you how these <coughs> and how these problems are solved uh, using various solver and with a uh, different library and we have what algorithm we have and first is introduction to uh, how to <coughs> Install SciPy module library. The SciPy modules can be <coughs> uh, imported directly into your Python program using import SciPy. <coughs> and here, what I have is uh, some uh, help to describe what is a <coughs> SciPy about and what kind of library they have. Okay, you can see that. SciPy has a very uh, strong variety of uh, so-called uh, clusters or call using uh, <coughs> for classing purpose and also have a so-called discrete Fourier transform and leg uh, legacy of uh, some of the existing uh, uh, Fourier transform. Also solve numerical integration interpolation uh, as well and give you a, a very classic uh, set of a so-called linear algebra uh, <coughs> library called uh, linear algebra routine including the BALAS. Uh, BALAS stands for basic linear algebra subroutine originally <coughs> written in Fortran 77 and then uh, somebody actually uh, upgrade uh, uh, rewrite it into a C program. Um, also, the so-called uh, LA pack is a linear algebra package. These are the two classic, classic uh, uh, our, uh, <coughs> library we use uh, about uh, 50 years ago, since 50 years ago. So these are uh, almost like a standard linear algebra operation if you ever do numerical computing. And this program, <clears throat> these library are still written in C and pre-compiled, and they, uh, SciPy just link it to the Python uh, program you have. And here what we have is the Python actually uh, don't do all these heavy lifting calculation and computing, and actually C program library actually d does those. And, but it, Python just provide, or SciPy actually just provide a uh, so-called application <coughs> interface, sometimes we refer as API, uh, towards the uh, C library. So Python would not suffer from any of those uh, <coughs> uh, Python comp uh, interpreters uh, uh, slowness, as you get, basically you get uh, C level of performance if using SciPy and NumPy. So we see that why is the uh, numerical computing people still using Python? And Python is just a higher level 
uh, interface for getting your data organized and send it to uh, to the solver. And actually, the solver was in uh, written in the more efficient <coughs> uh, compilers like a C or C prom, and so on and so forth. Okay, I believe some of the algorithm we're going to introduce today still was in uh, written in uh, Fortran 77, but it's got compiled into a uh, binary library and using Python API to call them. Similar situation for uh, last semester we introduced is so-called Garobi. And they are written completely in C library uh, C. However, just using Python to uh, build a model and sending all the data into the uh, Groby C library, and so they can solve very, very fast. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, also the SciPy continue with that. SciPy has some uh, image processing package as well, and today we're going to focus on. Uh, the optimization library. See, they have so many libraries, we're just focusing on one uh, of them today. And there's a uh, large part of a so-called uh, signal processing okay, tool. This is a very famous as well. These are the classic uh, signal processing people use in electrical engineering. Okay, And SciPy also have a, a very well-defined uh, sparse matrix dealing with a sparse linear algebra. And <clears throat> these are also coming from the UMF pack library, which is a, a fairly uh, famous uh, setup. And also with the sparse linear algebra, we have an eigen system for that. And of course, they have larger of the tools available Okay, using for string configuration of SciPy. <clears throat> so package content is uh, listed right here for you. And it gives you what version we are you I'm using <clears throat> in this com my computer so far. Uh, the official <clears throat> version is 1.81, but I have some other uh, packages uh, compatible only up to 1.73. So <clears throat> I update uh, quite often around probably once a week to these packages. So <clears throat> once the other package come uh, catch up and my SciPy uh, <clears throat> version also catch up. So, uh, so here we show you some of the information about SciPy. SciPy is a huge uh, scientific computing library and not as uh, just limited to the optimization and today we're just focusing on the optimization part of it <clears throat> next thing is uh, if you don't have a scipy installed the installation of scipy is uh, very uh, simple straightforward if you dealing with the so-called com uh, in the command prompt for your <clears throat> anaconda environment you can just uh, type in conda install scipy and then you say conda update scipy to the most recent version. Okay. And then you can, in your <coughs> uh, scipy prompt, you can, uh, in your Jupyter notebook, you can see import scipy and see if give you any error message. If this is okay, then, uh, means your SciPy is installed. Uh, some of you say, hey, I don't know how to go into the so-called scientific uh, Pi. Actually, what you do is you can go to the Anaconda 3, open a Anaconda prompt for your environment. And here, my, my environment is IMSC A81. And it just gives you a prompt. And then you say Conda install okay sorry uh, scipy <clears throat> for windows environment this is very easy and for macintosh if you uh, if you install on the apple devices um, any command prompt and for, for 
will be working for you and instead of just using the Anaconda. So here what I have is all the requ requested package already installed. And so this is uh, representing how easy it is to install uh, SciPy. Or if you don't know how to uh, issue commands in the command prompt in the Windows or uh, Macintosh, <coughs> you can open a empty Jupyter Notebook. Just type uh, this using pip install, or pip install and update and so called SciPy. And it will show you and show you how to install directly in your Jupyter Notebook. <clears throat> okay. Uh, today's our focus is on the so-called optimization modules or optimized module uh, in SciPy. The SciPy.optimal modules right here and provide uh, several uh, different uh, uh, optimization algorithm. First type is unconstrained and constrained optimization of the multivariables function. And we're using a minimize uh, function call. And it doesn't matter they're constrained or not unconstrained, we're using this uh, uh, the uh, consistent uh, function call called minimize. So <clears throat> for the unconstrained up, up, uh, problem, uh, which means I just have an objective function without constraint. There are several <coughs> efficient methods to be, uh, can be used. Uh, for example, the BFGS method we mentioned in our class is a quasi Newton method. And Nether and Me method, Nether and Me simplex downhill simplex method. And this is a, a, a a pattern search method without any derivative for multivariate function, and Newton's method, conjugate gradient method, a Kobila method, which is a, a sequential linear approximation method, okay, developed by, uh, by Michael Powell, I think. And then you have a sequential uh, least square quadratic programming method. So, <clears throat> All these methods, uh, I think the, uh, the last two methods are, can handle constraint and bounds. And we have other method I will introduce to, uh, in the next lecture period. The best of all for the SciPy, they have a so-called global optimization subroutine. And they're using so-called simulating annealing, uh, swarm, uh, particle swan algorithm and basin hopping algorithm. So these are the uh, well-known so, uh, algorithm using either simulated and needing ge genetic algorithm or uh, N. Connolly algorithm. And these are algorithm using so-called evolutionary uh, algorithm for finding global solution. And the next uh, type of uh, Problem uh, included with the SciPy optimize model is called least square minimization and <clears throat> and curve feeding and least square optimization uh, minimization is you have a target function and you have a simulator or approximate function and you're trying to uh, make sure these uh, uh, true function is, uh, your simulator function or your approximator function. Is as close as the original, <coughs> original, uh, function. And I will talk about, uh, some, uh, broader application in this uh, so-called least square, uh, minimization. I will actually have a separate uh, lecture video talking about this least square problem. And it looks like not a regular <coughs> Uh, minimization or, or optimization problem. However, they can be uh, with them slightly mo uh, model changes or modeling technique. They can be as good as <coughs> uh, some of the constraint optimization problem. Actually, majority of the constraint optimization problem can be converted into least square problem. And next is the so-called curve feeding algorithm. 
is you have a whole bunch of a point, okay, and you trying to <clears throat> fit your line, uh, fit a curve uh, to for a several data point you have. You're trying to generalize a uh, a set of a point which is fitting a line or a curve through these uh, control point. And this method also are very popular for uh, for uh, an algorithm called Bayesian optimization algorithm to solve a, <clears throat> a global optimization uh, using a probabilistic algorithm. And next is the scalar unif uh, variable, which is so-called uh, one variable function minimization function. These are the basic uh, algorithm we frequently use in our uh, line search. We talk about this uh, <clears throat> line search algorithm in the beginning of chapter A. And rule finding algorithm is uh, we finding when is the uh, what is the function value hits zero. And this algorithm is also can be <clears throat> considered as one dimensional uh, minimization or uh, uh, algorithm since we, if we take the first derivative of our uh, objective function <clears throat> and we set it to zero and rule finder algorithm can be used as a minimizer as well. So we already understand some of the uh, basic concept and therefore these algorithm looks uh, different application. <clears throat> However, once was using some of the modeling uh, concept we have from uh, the textbook we went over for the uh, before today, and these should be uh, almost interchangeable. <clears throat> and the last one is the so-called multivariate. Uh, equations uh, system so okay solver and this is also a rule finding algorithm for example <clears throat> we have a whole bunch of uh, non uh, system of uh, nonlinear equations and we're trying to find if they equal to zero or not and these algorithm <clears throat> are also can be easily converted as a least square uh, problem um, uh, our hybrid Powell method is developing by Michael Powell's in Cambridge. Um, <clears throat> and some of the algorithm we even introduced in our textbook. Uh, Levenberg and Maguire uh, system is a uh, trust region Newton, uh, exact Newton method. And uh, uh, <clears throat> some of the other algorithm uh, we will uh, briefly go through I won't and continue on we're talking about using optimization modules in SciPy and first we're going to introduce a, <coughs> a two minimizations uh, function they are uniform uh, coded in this way so each one of the function uh, includes several different methods for example the minimize scalar it's basically the one <clears throat> dimensional optimization, which is one variable uh, for your objective function, uh, so objective function, yes. And then uh, these function usually are, uh, these type of method usually using in the line search, which is we already calculate a direction, and then we just need to find the optimal step size <clears throat> for that. And several methods we already introduced in our uh, beginning of a chapter A, talking about those. Um, the minimize function is one a uh, function library is one of the richest so-called minimization algorithm like a BFGS method, conjugate gradient methods, and other method of <coughs> use. And then we uh, introduce the so-called <coughs> Rule finding or rule scare is the same thing. Finding a uh, function uh, when they cross the zero, functional value crosses zero. Rule scale is for one dimensional, one variable. A uh, root is for multi variables and so on and so forth. So these are the, <coughs> uh, actually can be seen as a minimization algorithm uh, when we take the first derivative or <coughs> in 
mechanical engineering or electrical engineering that we call the Jacobian <coughs> matrix. All right. So uh, for OR people, they are basically the same thing. We just need to change our model a little bit. And then the next we're talking about curve feeding, uh, which is uh, also uh, a least square method. Uh, finally, we have the linear programming uh, subroutine called linear programming, especially solving for uh, linear program. Uh, we talk about quite a bit of this in uh, IMSC <coughs> A81 and using the SciPy linear program. <coughs> Library. Of course, this library is free, and for commercial package, we have a Cplex or Groby uh, function. So again, in our uh, in our MSOR program, I introducing SciPy like this for linear programming and some of the easier topics in learning your programming in IMSC 780. I touch base with the, <clears throat> I touch base with the, some of the uh, uh, one dimensional search method in 780. So 780, we start using SciPy, which is complete free library. And for IMSC 881, the linear programming class, we focus on using this linear program uh, portion of the SciPy and we introduce a Cplex and Groby in that case for commercial library. In IMSC A84, which is integer programming, we uh, dedicate the class entirely into Groby because that's the, uh, uh, the feedback I get from our MSOR graduate and those are the uh, software uh, most of the company are using right now. And I, of course, I know that there are some company using different software, but uh, those are the uh, feedback I get from our graduate for the program. <clears throat> and uh, Groby uh, also is easier to work with the academia environment as well. Uh, instead of uh, C-Plex is now for academia is completely free as well, uh, but in commercial is uh, a very different uh, situation. Okay, so this class I'm going to come back to using SciPy general uh, optimization library. In today's class, I'm more focused on uh, so-called uh, general overview of the SciPy optimization and especially the minimize scalar and minimize uh, part of a, a, a solver and just give you a general uh, overview of how you can uh, put in a model and get a solution uh, from these two uh, library or function. And next couple lectures, I will f more focus on specific aspect of the uh, minimization and so give you some of the application, uh, more detail on each one of the algorithm and we use, I choose several uh, uh, algorithm or methods, they're called the methods and using in SciPy and give you more detail uh, insight for each one of the algorithm they use and show you some of the example. <clears throat> okay, let's start with a very basic, easy one. We call the minimize function with a one variable. We call the uh, so-called scalar op uh, optimizer or scalar function, basically one variable. Here I have example uh, y equals to 3x uh, to the fourth minus 2x plus 1. And I plot this for your reference. Very easy. And we're trying to, uh, <clears throat> we can easily see that the uh, uh, optimal, or which is the minimal, is approximately around 0.55 right here. Okay. And this, when we're just using the minimized scalar because it's a one uh, dimensional problem. So first we're trying to import the minimized scalar from the SciPy optimized library. So this is a from. SciPy optimize import minimize scalar. 
So this is the function we're going to use. Before we're using the uh, mean my scalar, and we need to define our objective function. So here what we have is define our objective function. Uh, input is a single variables x and uh, return uh, three times x to the fourth minus two times x plus one, and that's it. <clears throat> so once we define this function, we're going to using this objective function as a minimizer, and using it is fairly simple. It just say a minimize scalar and give objective function, and the result we store in a variable called res. Okay. So we can run this, we can print the result, <coughs> and we can see that <coughs> the mean uh, minimal function value, optimal function value is 0.1745, and the algorithm took around 16 functional evaluation, okay, do the 16 of a functional evaluation, and this is uh, number of iterations, 12. Spent 12 iteration total of uh, uh, 16 functional evaluation because initially we need the four data point to begin with. Like we said it in uh, beginning of chapter eight. Uh, initially we need uh, the left bracket, right bracket, and two point in, in the middle, or we'll call the lambda and mu, and those are four point to begin with. Then we take each iteration, we're just adding on one more additional uh, data point and trial point or and also so that makes sense and take 12 iteration and total uh, 16 functional evaluation S uh, success is say true we find the optimal uh, optimality condition exists and the optimal solution equals 2.55 right here all right so this is a short and sweet, and just define the function, uh, call the minimizer, uh, minimize scalar, giving the objective function, and it will find the optimal, uh, the minimal point. However, we know some of the nonlinear function may not even have a min, uh, minimal. Uh, for example, the, uh, if we talking about y equals to x to the cube, and then this function will not, uh, is, did not have, uh, does not have a minimal, is a uh, uh, function, and then we're using this uh, minimized scalar will give us the overflow error because the minimal is negative infinity. This is one situation has no <coughs> minimal point, and the other situation we might uh, encounter is we may have <coughs> a several global minimum or several uh, glo uh, global minimum. That's right. So <coughs> minimize scalar may not guarantee to find all of them. So here we have a uh, then we need to dive uh, deeper for this type of function and. For example, the, uh, the test function I have is, uh, what is it? Okay, uh, x to the cube and minus x squared. Or the other function I test right here is 3 times x to the 2 minus 2x plus 1. Okay, so here we have several possible functions to test with you. And if I using this function and defining the objective function of x equals to x to the uh, 4 uh, minus x to the uh, x squared and trying to find the minimal uh, scale of this function. We get a solution is negative uh, 0.25, which is right here, and the optimal point is 0.7 right around here okay and we know if we see this function actually <coughs> this function has a two different and uh, uh, minimum 100.7 100 
but the other one on the negative 0.7 and they have the same value okay so it's basically uh, <coughs> uh, the minimum point actually is one over a square root of two and the other one is negative one over square root two in this case okay and the minimal value functional value is negative one quarter so here we have for the minimizer scalar we can using a another parameter called bracket so here we're trying to say okay i want to find something in the positive side something in the negative side and see if the bracket works so we adding one more parameter called bracket between negative 1 to 0 so negative 1 to 0 see if I can find a solution okay we solve that uh, again uh, the method is uh, is actually uh, still getting the negative 2.5 uh, 2 and still our solution is positive so it doesn't matter which bracket I put in and the algorithm is default using brand to begin with a brand is a uh, brand algorithm is using the first derivative uh, of the function <coughs> to begin with so for this we need to using a another method uh, called bounded bounded is basically a brand method with uh, consider a specific uh, uh, bracket okay bracket so we bound a variable into certain uh, region. So in this case, we're using a different method called bounded, and giving bound is between negative one to one. And now you see that we get a solution of negative uh, one over square root of two. Okay. So these are very interesting uh, result from even the simplest algorithm. And also this function, minimize scalar, has some other choice using golden section method we talk about in the class. And even you can provide your own uh, minimizing algorithm, <clears throat> like a Fibonacci or uh, other methods we're talking about. And these methods, all these methods, brand and golden uh, search and bounded method, they don't use uh, gradient information, basically. So, <clears throat> all right. Next subject we're going to continue talking about is a minimized function with many variables. Okay, we call the multi variables uh, uh, objective function. And then we're supposed to be using a, a so called general minimize uh, subroutine or library uh, function called minimize. This function, I have a link for that and stay. Okay, you can go to uh, SciPy's website to see the reference of these uh, uh, these uh, minimize subroutine, and you can see that uh, for multivariate function, you have a whole bunch of uh, uh, different algorithms to choose from and. Next lectures, we're going to start talking about some of those to begin with, okay? And <clears throat> with uh, different uh, characters and input and options and so on and so forth. So we go a little bit deeper than the uh, IMSC 780's discussion on this. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, I think over the futures, if you're using the SciPy, uh, uh, minimize our function and you have to come back to this page many times so I give you a link on this to forward you but for uh, minimize function it can have a so-called unconstrained or constrained uh, problem and in SciPy they separate this into linear constraint and nonlinear constraint and the bounds on the variables so, so uh, we will talk about those uh, in more constrained problem later on in detail. Okay, so here what we have is I'm going to give you a simple uh, star cells problem. Okay, uh, so what we're trying to say is if 
if a stockbroker who is interesting maximize the total income from the sales of a fixed number of your stock. So the stockbroker then trying to sell the stock <clears throat> to a several different buyer. Okay. And you have identified a particular set of buyer and each buyer we know the prices they are willing to pay and how, uh, how much cash they have on hand. And my goal is maximize my total, uh, selling price or uh, revenue basically how, how much i can get from these buyers <clears throat> we can uh, phrase this problem as a constraint optimization problem the objective function you have is you wanted to maximize your income uh, the stock broker's income okay also we have a certain constraint each buyer can only purchase a certain number of the stock because they have a fixed number of money a uh, fixed amount of money in their pocket okay so <clears throat> here is the uh, basic introduction and we have uh, first is going to uh, import numpy we're going to using numpy function for several uh, initial setup and data conversion then we from uh, scipy optimize modules import the minimizing and the linear constraint module and for example i have a 10 buyer and total shares uh the broker has is uh, 15. okay so here what we have is uh first we need to generate some random number first is <clears throat> I want to generate the prices for each buyer. <clears throat> the prices for each buyer, for example, I'm going to generate something between 0 and 1. Okay? And, <clears throat> and for each buyer, okay, each buyer, I want to generate the uh, amount of money they have between 1 to 4. Okay, between 1 to 4. <clears throat> So these are, uh, uh, actually the second one generate integer number, random integer number between one to four. <clears throat> okay. So here is, I just hypothetically set this up. Okay. This, uh, the prices for each buyer, they're willing to pay for this stock, uh, vary between zero to one. <clears throat> All right. And. <clears throat> For each buyer, they uh, randomly have a one to four uh, amount of money. So here is the number of share a particular customer can buy or buyer can buy is equal to amount money the buyer available divided by prices uh, they are willing to pay. So we pre-calculate this number of share per buyer equals to the money available, which is one to four generated right here, and divided by prices, we generate it right here, zero to one. So we're going to print the prices, money available, and number of share uh, to buy. So here what we have, and for each one of the buyer, okay, these are the prices, uh, prices each one of the buyer and these are the bunch of uh, the total 10 buyer I'm sorry total 10 buyer these are the amount of money these 10 buyer has and then this is the amount of sh uh, number of share these each individual buyer can have uh, can purchase so since uh, I'm a stock broker and I want to sell all my stock on hand so I have one of the constraints says, okay, the broker wants to sell all his, uh, his or her stock to the highest bidder. So if I set a variable called X, X is the number of share each customer or each buyer can buy and add it together is supposed to equal to total number of share we have. So this is the constraint. Okay. So mention of X, I equals to total number of share, which is 15 in this example. 
Also, the constraint. The constraint part is a linear constraint, so we set it up. Uh, one times number of buyer equals two. Uh, so the so total number of buyer at the x equals to number of share. Uh, lower bound equals the number of share. Upper bound also equals the number of share. So this is the e uh, equality constraint in that case. So since their lower bound and upper bound equals the same. So we're using two inequality constraint uh, const lower bound and upper bound to define a equality constraint. <coughs> Second, <coughs> Each old buyer could have uh, limited to buying a certain amount. We know that from the previous calculation and the maximum amount of uh, share each one of the buyer can buy is an N share per buyer. <coughs> so I'm going to set up the bound for all the <coughs> variable equals to between 0 to N for N in number of share per buyer. Okay. So the number of share per buyer. So this number of share per buyer for all these. <clears throat> so we define a equality constraint. Define a bounds on the variable. Minimum is zero. Uh, maxima is the number of share per buyer. <clears throat> Finally, we want to define our objective function. The objective function is trying to maximize uh, the total income for the stockbroker. So this is a maximization problem. However, the uh, SciPy uh, minimize library only dealing with minimization library. So here we have a negative uh, sign in front of that. <coughs> okay, it's equal to the prices times the x. X is the number of share they buy. And uh, summing up together, or we can say price is zero times x zero, uh, plus negative sign, uh, price is one times x is one, and so on and so forth. And we can implement this by x dot prices. So our objective function calculation is easy, which is negative x dot product of prices. Okay. So, is a dot product of x and prices vector. Once we define the linear constraint, define the bonds on the variables, define the objective function, we're ready to use the minimize uh, subroutine to solve for uh, the optimal solution. Okay. And of course, minimize this objective function and x naught, the second parameters, x naught is, is basically the initial solution. We're using 10 times the random uh, variable of number of buyers. So that's 10 times uh, from 0 to uh, 1. So it will be between a number between 0 to 10 in that sense. The argument we're using is the prices, basically the prices of each one of this, uh, each one of the custom, uh, buyer willing to pay. And the constraint equals to the constraint. We define it right here. Call it constraint. Okay. And bounds is equal to bounds, and which is the bounds we defined previously. So here we have an explanation of uh, which parameter means what. So we solve that uh, using 22 milliseconds. It's a fairly small problem. And we're going to print the result. And actually, you can see that the objective function is negative uh, 6.778. And actually, this since this is a minimization problem, and I'm using the uh, negative of the uh, income. So actually the total uh, income is 8.6778. Uh, okay. And <clears throat> this part is giving you the current solution. And uh, second buyer didn't buy anything. The, for example, one, two, three, four, five. the fifth buyer, the sixth buyer, and the seventh buyer didn't buy anything as well. 
So, so from the <coughs> output, we know that the total income is 8.678. Okay, for example, the first one, uh, customer buying 4.9 share. And the second one buying four point uh, five 5.4 shares and so on. Uh, okay, second one didn't buy anything. It's a negative to the uh, 10 to the negative 15. So didn't buy anything. And the third one buying 4.5a. Mm -hmm. The third, uh, the fourth buyer buying 3.9, and basically 3.9 shares, so on and so forth. And also we can print out the total number of share is 15 still. So that's the total number of share available. Okay. And I have a better, uh, version of that, of this solution right here. So total number of shares is 15. First buyer didn't buy anything. Second buyer buy about uh, leftover money. Basically means uh, how much money they have left over after they purchase the stock. The first buyer have zero money uh, <coughs> left over. The second buyer have a three dollars, uh, th three dollars left over because uh, the second buyer didn't buy anything uh, in the decision. Okay, and so on and so forth. Right here, I give you a vector of that. And the leftover money is the money available for each buyer minus the result of a solution number of share uh, times the prices each one. So this is a short and sweet. I'm showing you a simple application for set up a, a models and using minimize function to solve it. Okay, this is actually a linear program. Uh, in the sense, so we really don't have any problem solving these problems. However, uh, this problem also can have an infeasible solution. I want to show you total number of shares is a thousand. Total number buyer is 15. Okay. So do the same thing. Price is randomly selected. Uh, money available is also doing the same thing as $1 to $10 in this case. So each one of the buyer could have a little, uh, now has more money, uh, used to be one to four. And share of each, uh, buyer can buy with, uh, a four. Okay. And also same thing doing the constraint, doing the uh, bounds on the variable and objective function is exactly the same <clears throat> we're trying to uh, minimize but objective function is set up to the negative ma maximize so after we solve this uh, problem you can see that uh, solve for a function of 89 however this is not a feasible solution okay uh, <clears throat> And these are the amount of uh, share each one of the buyer could buy. And this is not a feasible solution. Um, because level of money, everybody spent all their money, still didn't buy the entire 1,000 share. Okay, either I need to have a more buyer, or I have each buyer could have more money in order. So I'm going to leave to the exercise for you for this problem. Uh, what if, especially uh, for this, we have one to ten. How many buyer I have to have in order to get a, a, a so-called feasible solution? Of course, these are the data I randomly generate. It could vary from one to the other. At least you'd say, okay, at least some of the uh, number of uh, buyer we have to have more in order to uh, purchase the entire one thousand share of the stock. But this will give you a idea uh, how the algorithm can also uh, produce infeasible result. And I'm pretty much finished this particular uh, lectures. And uh, the purpose of this lecture is just giving you a overview of a SciPy library and some of the functionality they have, one dimensional minimizer 
and multidimensional minimizer and so on and so forth. And the next uh, <clears throat> lecture period, we're going to show you some more detail on each one of the algorithm and using a standard test function to get, walk you through uh, more detailed uh, behavior of some of the algorithm we have in the SciPy optimizing library. Um, I'm going to conclude this lecture so far and uh, we'll see you in the next lecture.